get over the last few days we're talking about Samhain and, and Halloween and a, a time of the year when the spirit world is closest to the living you know we talk about All, so, all Souls and All Saints Day and the period of, of, of Samhain I read a, an amazing article in the in the Telegraph sorry my apologies in the, in the mail uh, about a week or ten days ago uh, and it was talking about the significance of um, you know flowers and feathers and, and, and rainbows and, and birds um, as a way of maybe a loved one communicating with you uh, from the, the other side or, you know, having, having left this, this world. Um, and it, 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 I, we share this online, actually, asking you guys, you know, what, what kind of signs have you had from loved ones who have passed away? I'll read out the full text uh, a little later on, but the ones that kept coming up was the robin, little bird, the robin. Many texts with regards to that one. Butterflies came up an awful lot. Finding coins in different parts of the house appeared, but robins time after time after time. For others, it would be feathers or butterflies or rainbows. And my intention on that was to talk with uh, TJ Higgs, one of the UK's leading psychic mediums, just on that. Then I went on to our website last night and I found myself an hour and a half later still in there, watching her, working with people, um, communicating uh, with people and loved ones on the other side. It was, it was a fascinating hour and a half to see her at work. She joins me by phone. <laughs> TJ, good morning. Good morning. So, Thank it's, you so, for, uh, so, so my me. my interest in you is much broader than just signs from beyond the grave. I mean, it sounds like it. I'm sorry, you lost an hour and a half. <laughs> I, 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 I don't I don't want it back. I, I was quite happy to, to sit and watch you work. But you, you know, when we talk of, um, I will we'll come back to the signs. Don't get me wrong, mm. I will. But just in your own life experience, I'm mad keen to talk to you about that um, because you, as a very small child. Um, mm. began to notice that maybe you were you were able to to see or communicate with things that perhaps you shouldn't be able to. Yeah, and I didn't know I wasn't supposed to be able to do that because to me it was very natural, you know. So um, I was just wondering why people were sitting on my pops when he was sitting in the living room, you know. And my nan used to just watch me very, very closely, and she she always said I had second sight. My nan, so she was on my side. But um, my mum grew up in in Ireland, you know, very fearful, and um, she was scared that I was bringing the devil in you know as she would say yeah. so I've very early learned not to say a word you know so because they looked at me as if I was very strange when I could see these other people in in the home you know and just with regards to what you could actually see because I know mm. you talk about this and, and, and you know on your stage and when you when you travel around doing tours and what have you are they actual physical people or are they kind of uh, manifestations or like uh, I, I don't know like yeah. vague yeah, impressions well, so- the, it depends on the energy. So if I see somebody like a, a real see-through person, you know, almost solid, they usually don't have any energy to communicate with because they've used all their energy to show that image to me. Do you know when people go on investigations, paranormal, and they say, I saw the lady, but she never spoke to me or the man, that's because they've used all their energy to actually show themselves. So when I'm on stage, I don't have time for them to, you know, bring themselves to full vision for me. So they'll just sometimes show me like their hair was important to them or, I don't know, a tattoo that they had or something they were wearing when they passed or they were buried in. So the easiest way to describe it is, um, some people might not know this though, but um, I'm of the age where we used to have the negative photos, do you know? So you'd have those That's negative right. strips, yeah. yeah? So some young people will be Googling this right now. <laughs> and um, But <laughs> you could see the outline, couldn't you? So you could make out who was in the photo. The negatives came was... in the little pouch with the photographs exactly. in themselves. In the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's like the spirit world to me. <laughs> but when you were younger, um, was it just, was it visual or was it communication as a child or a teenager? It was very, very visual. And I remember being on a holiday. Um, my stepmom and her friend had taken us all to this caravan and it was um, really bad weather. You know, it was the worst week, I think. It was something like February. And in my bedroom, there were two children that were constantly visiting me and like under my bed. And when I was saying that, you know, she was like, you know, you're not telling the truth and, you know, all of these things. And I'm like, these two kids are absolutely there, like talking to me, telling me their tales. 
and um, so yeah, it's it is very very visual. And Sometimes that would have been put down by adults talking yeah. to you as just a child with a vivid imagination. Absolutely, and the word liar was kind of the word that I got used to. So I very quickly learnt to, you know, to keep quiet. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you and you did, and you had what one would term yeah. term for a period. Uh, uh, don't get me wrong, a, a normal life. You, you, you <laughs> no, got it. You, you got <laughs> normal. You got a job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you settled down. You had a, a family, but it it didn't go away. In fact, it did the opposite. Did it? It, yeah, it didn't go away. And, um, you know, I would um, see like my, even, not just spirit visions, but like psychic visions where I would say to my husband, where were you today? And he'd be like, I've been in my office all day. And we lived in Northern Ireland, you know, so we lived in Derry. So he was, I'd seen him in different areas, like helicopters and things. And he'd be like, no, I've been in my office all day. And it wasn't until we left Ireland and got divorced, actually, that um, he, he told me that it kind of used to freak him out that I'd known that he wasn't where he was supposed to be. So, so you know, as a, a psychic medium, I connect to living and to spirit, you know. So, because um, at the end of the day, we're all souls, you know. We, you know, the spirit world is souls. We are souls. So, and and we continue to evolve. And at what stage then did people start to ask you for um, uh, help to communicate with the loved one? So I, I, I was kind of, a, it sounds really rude, but I was a very reluctant medium because I, I didn't think that this was supposed to be shared, you know, after hiding it for so long. But um, sort of about the age of 28, it kind of got worse, if you like, you know, and I, I thought that I'm going to have to do something with this. And um, I went for a reading. I had a, I'd seen all these visions all day of a, of a boyfriend and um and everything that I'd seen in my visions all day had happened. Like he'd packed, he'd left. I saw the note on the, and I'm thinking, why am I thinking he's on the motorway? And he actually was, because he was leaving home. And um, so I went to a reading, I went to a psychic fair and met a, a lovely man called Barry who became my first circle leader. And I thought I was going to, I took my cousin because I thought I don't want to take my shoes off. I don't want to drink the water. They might drug me. I was like, really? Yeah. What are these people going to, you know, because you don't know, do you? The unknown. And um, and from that, that day I sat in his circle, it was just like, I felt like normal. You know, I felt all these people knew and understood. And so I was like 29, 30 and that's it. I've been working ever since. Because we, I mean, what do you think about, there is scepticism around around psychics. Yeah. Maybe you yourself were even sceptic. I wonder, is, is that yeah. sometimes justified, you know, that, that maybe not all of them are the, are the real deal kind of thing? 100%. I mean, it, like, as with everything, isn't there, do you know? So, and I think, um, you know, I, I love skeptic i i actually recently had a, a lovely man in my audience front row and as soon as i looked at him you didn't need to be psychic it was like clearly dragged along and i said you know the bar will be open in 45 minutes then another 45 minutes then you can go you know so yeah, just yeah. bear with me yeah. and he was like yeah yeah you know smiling and i said listen i said what i'd like you to do i said i would like you to watch my demonstration i said at the end i want you to give me marks out of 10 would you do that for me so he i gave him power over me if you know what i mean yeah. but then he had to watch the whole demonstration without fidgeting which was also you know <laughs> reverse psychology so I made him stand up at the end and I said so what do you think and so he said four out of ten and I was like well that's better than zero and he went actually he said no he said ten he said I don't know what you've just done but you've opened my mind and that's all I, I'm not trying to you know tell everybody to believe me or you know I, I, I know what I know and I'm very comfortable and happy with the knowledge that I have of the spirit world, but an open mind, you know, that's that's what I'm I'm after. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And and but, they're yeah, very they're absolutely. very keen to communicate, are they? Um, yeah. But like, yeah. I mean, like, in, in, do, do they communicate in, in life changing ways for their loved ones who miss them? Sometimes, because 
you know, there, a lot of people say, well, if my dad was watching over me, I wouldn't, that wouldn't have happened to me. Or if my mum loved me, that wouldn't happen. Well, that's not true. Because if your mum and dad were in still in this world, you would still have to go through those experiences, wouldn't you? You know, they cannot change your your destiny, you know, the, the life that you signed up for. But there are some times, like I, I had an experience um, years ago now, I read for a lady and I don't work with a crystal ball. Do you know, I'm not a sort of a crazy gypsy kind of Lee lady. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I, but the ball, I, I had in my head, I needed my crystal ball, which is uh, blues and greens. It's not clear. Um, blues, greens and purples. Put it on my desk. And while I was in the middle of the reading, um, she w- they were talking, her mum was telling me that she was going on holiday at Christmas. And as she started to tell me that, I looked at the ball and in the ball, I could see like images of turtles and they were drowning. And so it, it scared me, you know, because I, and I said to her, wherever you're going at Christmas, you can't go because the turtles are drowned. And if a turtle drowns in water, that means humans will, you know, we would. So, and, it, and I just said, your mum is saying, you can't go, you can't go. Um, anyway, she's gone home and told her husband, who's really not very happy because they're paid for this very expensive holiday. And, but they promised they wouldn't go and they went somewhere else for Christmas. Then on Boxing Day, I got a phone call from her husband um, apologising because obviously he wasn't very happy with me for the message. And it wasn't me, it was her mother um, because they would have been right in the middle of the tsunami. Oh my God, I wrote down the word tsunami as you were talking there. That's incredible. And that also, because I'd given that message, I met somebody else when I I was doing a TV pilot for Destiny TV that sort of changed and evolved. And and I was sitting with the producer of that. And when I was talking to her, she said, oh, there was something like I I did did a reading for anyway, some, some personal things. And then I said are you going on holiday at Christmas? So she said, yes, you can't go because wherever that is, because I still didn't know where it was. You know? And I was like, wherever that is, the turtles drown. So you can't go. And um, and she didn't go. She pulled out, but her it was her ex-fiance. They were going to use it as a holiday. He took his friend and his friend actually passed away. And, and that was, and I know I felt like I couldn't, you know, I saved her or I didn't, spirit did, you know. And, um, and even like weird things like I, I work in Japan a lot and um, I was in Japan in November 2019 and they had the Seiko clock in Rapongi Hills where I live when I work. And I'd go up and get my Starbucks every every evening after work, walk up the hill, have some fresh air, taking photos of the Seiko clock for the Olympics. And every time I took a photo in my head, my head said the clock's wrong. And I'm thinking clock can't be wrong it's a Seiko clock it's for the Olympics can't be wrong and then had a discussion with one of my clients over there um, one of my private uh, Japanese clients and um, himself his wife and the interpreter we're all together and I just said something's not something bad is coming to Japan and and I could see a lot of images and the clock's wrong the Olympics isn't happening something bad is coming I did not know it was COVID I didn't know any of those things I just knew something bad was coming because the clock was wrong wow. you know so that's mad isn't it but and even it, i think that's mad but even <laughs> but if you look if you look at those kind of things that's mm. t- that's telling the future to an extent but looking at, at the yeah. past have you ever been in situations whereby somebody who was and i don't mean to be too graphic about this but no. an unsolved murder for instance from the afterlife yeah. do you know what i mean i mean why, why yeah, can't I've, they why can't they come to you and tell you who killed them well, I've, I actually worked on a television show called Psychic Private Eyes, which was historic cases. And one of the young ladies, Sally Ann Bowman, did tell me the name of her murderer. And his name was Mark. And she kept telling me, Mark's all over me, Mark's all over me. And what he did for a living, um, I could smell chopped onions. I could smell, you know, like a pub kitchen, you know, when they're going to yeah. do burgers and fries, that yeah. smell had all of that smell and the man that murdered her was called Mark Dixie and he worked in a pub and he was a chef um, in a pub restaurant. Was that enough to prosecute him? Well, we had a policeman working alongside us, yeah, taking all the notes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we also got information that he'd come from Australia and he was in England and that was true. He'd been um, arrested for indecent assault and things in Australia, been deported back to England and um, but wasn't being, you know, kept an eye on in, in England and then stalked her and took her life. Oh, my and God. And she was an excellent communicator. You know, and still now she will give me a message and I'll have to 
message her mum and say, you know, your, your little girl's here again and she's telling me. I think one of her favourite things was strawberry trifle and uh, just this one particular day, and I don't like strawberry trifle, but I was like, you know when you just have like a, I think you say in Ireland, a notion for it. You know, I remember <laughs> being pregnant over there. <laughs> and I remember the guy in the shop saying, you have a notion for licorice. And I was like, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I had for this. Uh, so you Irish guys will understand. Yeah, um, so yeah, 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 I had that for that. And her mum said that was her favourite thing and the last thing that they'd eaten together. But do they ever talk about where they're at and what it's like and what they're doing? It's the afterlife after all. Do they ever describe that? Sometimes they do. And I think one of the... One a, a great um, program. Well, it was a book, The Lovely Bones. If anybody's um, read that book, they they um, dramatised that. You know, they made a film of it, and that is is a very good understanding of where we take ourselves. You know, because we're going to take ourselves to our own utopia. You know, and and when people talk about being stuck in purgatory, um, it's it's where you take yourself, where you feel that you haven't completed something. So it's not full of chains and demons and demonic and all of those sort of things it's where you take yourself emotionally you know so and there is a a massive healing process when you pass over and to look at your life you have to face everything that you did said all emotions that you shared you know every emotion that someone else felt because of you you know good bad and ugly and then that becomes part of the soul essence that's communicating with me you know so because part of us will stay in the spirit world and be able to be communicating with for as long as we're loved you know and as long as we're needed and then the rest of us will go on and evolve and come back and have another you know soul purpose soul journey but it's not an actual description of what life is like for them in the next realm as such though see the way i'm shown it is like the next realm as you would call it is still here you know because they're still there's the spirit world and our world are still part of the same thing to me do you, you, do, you know? do you get those that are unhappy though or even angry um, yeah, the same as, you know, sometimes I read for someone, so like a lovely husband that's taken very quickly, you know, and he's had to leave his family behind and he's he's upset and he's angry about that because a lot of people say, are they happy? And I can't just say, yeah, you know, your husband of like 50 years is happy that he's not with you anymore because that would be lying, you know. So, but they're not sort of having temper tantrums, you know, but it is, it's not... Um, you know, again, I've left all my family. I'm really happy about it. So, no, that's not true. And when you're when, when you're in when you're in a setting where there are many people <laughs> asking for you to work with them, are the spirits in that? Let let's say it's a uh, like a an auditorium. Are they physically yeah. in the auditorium? Yes, they are. Yeah. And it's very, very busy, do you know. So, in the, you know, I've I've worked with when I when I was on tour with Colin, we'd we'd be like there'd be thousands. I mean, we did the Helix, you know, in in Dublin. So you, I don't even know how. I think that's a couple of thousand, you know, that you can get into that auditorium. So if you imagine two thousand living people, and they all know at least two or three people on the other side of life, you know. So it's, it's a very, very busy, busy room then. Yeah, behind me on stage, it's like there's there's. I always say like um, there's a some people will have like low, two or three relatives that will get off the bus. As I say, it's like oh, your coach is here, do you know. And there's there's a few of them that want to communicate. And would know, so. and do the spirits ask you? C- can I speak to a loved one? I see them in the audience. Do you know, I've, I've, they come, I open myself up so they can come and stand with me and give me their information and then they'll show me who, who they, who they love. But I did have that years ago. I was working in Cornwall, so they have their own kind of accent, you know. And, um, but I was take, I take a drink of water in between because for me, that's like the break of that message ready for the next one. You know, it's kind of like, the way my brain processes it. And as I went to take my sip of water, there was this beautiful old gen- older gentleman, sort of like you're talking in his 80s, and he had a real like Yorkshire accent and he just said, is it my turn now? <laughs> you know, Very and polite. I was like, yeah, he was so cute. So I was like, yes, mate, you know, I'll because I'll, my energy is so high and so fast. People like him sometimes get missed, you know, and that's why there's so many different mediums working and we're all, you know, we, you know, we all, we're all necessary. And do you, you know recall what, I mean? what he wanted so, to say, that elderly, polite gentleman? 
I, do you know, I think he just, I don't think he'd been gone very long either because it was, because they were a little bit in shock, you know, and, and I think it was something to do with the travelling because I, I make notes about some of the beautiful ones. Some of his family had travelled from Cornwall to Yorkshire, do you know, to to um, do a blessing for him, do you know, like his, his pass, passing. And he was very impressed how they'd got there. I think it was a bit like planes, trains and automobiles, you know, to get to, to, get to Yorkshire. So he was very happy with his family for taking the time out. You know, so and, yeah. You know, w- w- like we all have experiences of flowers or or, or feathers or, or birds or, or rainbows. I, I vividly remember only about six weeks ago, my my own father passed away, and as um, as yeah. he was going down in the coffin into the grave to be with my mother, two butterflies, yeah. uh, the, the sun shone um, all of a sudden, um, and oh, two wow. and two. That's made and, me go spimply. No, but it, yeah. it actually yeah. happened. And, and listen, um, uh, you know. I, I I I get it. Like you can you can say ah that's just two butterflies. But for me even and maybe I'm a bit of a skeptic. Even I thought wow that that's an incredible sign now. Um, two butterflies flying directly over the grave and flying amongst those that were mourning on the side. Is that a sign? Yeah. Absolutely is a sign. And and as I say, it's making me go all goosey, you know. So, and you know, when it's real, that's what it does to you. Do you know, so some sometimes people talk to me about something, I get no reaction whatsoever. And I'm just like, that's really nice, you know, and I'm just polite. What you just said to me, I could feel it, you know. So that's absolutely them saying, you know, here we are, you know, and we're joining you. I, one of one of my oldest friends, the same, we had a, um, a, f- a funeral for her, sort of like in a woodland setting. And and um, but all the, the doors were closed and there was uh, there was just like a one tiny window open in this in this um, in this room. It was beautiful, all glass. And this butterfly just came in and literally, as they were talking about her, just flew round all of us and then went back out again. And butterflies don't know how to go back out the same window, yeah, do they? Because they're I constantly at yeah. all but glass. I, you know? When, so I, when I saw like, the two butterflies, my interpretation yeah. of that anyway was that was my father and mother and they were telling me we're together Reunited. again. Reunited. Absolutely. And what are the other signs? We hear of white feathers, for instance. Well, yeah. And uh, if you saw one of the clips that I've actually got, I I was on stage and um, there was I was giving a message to this lady and another lady in the in the theatre was saying, I think it's with me. I think it's with me. And I was sort of like being very polite. It's like, no, I'm definitely with this lady, you know, because I can't move once I'm there. And all of a sudden a feather literally came from above in this theatre. And as it moved and it just landed literally on the woman I was talking to onto her head. So I was like, right, I think that's the sign. You know, we're definitely here, you know, and and. Obviously, people are going to say, you know, birds, etc. If you're walking under a tree that's full of loads of birds, it's not a sign from spirit. But if you get in your car and there's a feather in your car... Ah, you're your finding car, them in obscure places, of course. Exactly, exactly. Do you know, and I mean, my husband and I were on... Um, I think we were when it was on, we were on our honeymoon. And uh, the day we got married was his granddad's um, birthday or anniversary, do you know. So, so it was clear, you know, it was very much in our mind. And we went out to the, the patio and there was a feather and it looked like angel wings, do you know. So, and I was, and we'd been talking about his granddad, you know, and there's the feather. So that to me is a sign, but not if you're walking through the woods and there's loads of birds nesting, you know, and they're no, all... No, I know, all I know, I get that. Know. But but yeah. many people that yeah. we, we asked to comment on this ahead of it spoke of the robin. What's the significance oh. of the beautiful little robin? Do you know, I have that myself as well. Do you know, um, my when my pops died, my great granddad, I used to always have this little, little robin, like little fat robin that used to come. And I used to always talk to it as if it was my, my pops. And then on the day of my nan's funeral, there was a little, there was my, she always lived at number 11, my nan. There was a water butt in the cemetery, number 11. We were stood near that. This little fat robin came and landed. And then all of a sudden this really like skinny little, I thought that would be a female one. I don't know a lot about robins, but um, but this little female, like this little one came and sat next to it. And it was like, Nan, do you know, like that's my Nan and my pops. That's uh, She's his daughter, do you know, so it's my great granddad. And they were together. And many, many times um, people have told me about they've seen, or, you know, the spirit people are saying, you saw the Robin and it came, in, they've, they've come into the house. Yeah. You know, they, they're sitting on the fence outside. I mean, I, sometimes if I'm having a difficult time, I might just be like, please, I just need a sign. A sign. And then, 
yeah and a robin will just be there okay. and i'll think thank okay. you thank you spirit you know so yeah always say thank you you know very and, v- like very finally i mean this sincerely others yeah. then tell me yes. that they smell perfume of a loved one yeah. who has long since passed out of nowhere i've heard often of yeah. people who get the smell and the scent of pipe tobacco from a father or a grandfather that that's not uncommon that that is beautiful and that that takes a lot of energy for them to bring a scent as well you know because that is physical phenomena you know showing us a bird or a flat or you know a flower all of those things that's external but but that takes physical energy so your relatives are really really working hard to let you know that they're there with you and and our old manager Colin and I were on tour and our manager had passed overnight and she was a Jewish lady so we couldn't get home for her a funeral you know because they they do their funerals very very fast so we had to go back and she would have told us off if we didn't continue at all you know we would have been in real trouble you know and uh, especially now she's in spirit (laughs) and we were as we were all stood backstage we were all like saying um you know sadness for hillary and she used to wear um coco mademoiselle i don't wear that and the whole back of the theater just smelled and even the front row people were saying we could really smell that perfume. Where's that perfume coming? You know, so she, it's almost like she doused us in it, you know, to let us know that she'd got to the other side, she was okay, and she was still with us. And I think some people, I mean this now, finally, 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 but some people actually tell, (laughs) some people actually tell loved ones, don't they, that you will see me, I will be a butterfly, or I will be a bumblebee, or I will be the white feather that you find on the floor indoors. Isn't that some message as well, then, because people have promised that they will? And they do. Yeah, so many times I've heard that. I mean, I did write a book called Signs from the Afterlife as well. So and that that is full of stories of other people's stories as well. Do you know, so not just things that I've seen, but other people were sharing those stories with me. And they absolutely will show you that. Fascinating. TJ, thanks so much for chatting this morning. I really appreciate it. It's been amazing. Mind yourself. You can follow up yourselves, guys, with TJ Higgs, www.tjhiggs.com. It's the week that's in it, isn't it? Uh, As we talk all things of spirit world and Halloween.